Hi, I'm Britton Wills from Viva Goals, also PM Squared Consulting. This video is a detailed walkthrough of Viva Goals. Now, because it's detailed, you might want to listen to the whole thing to begin with, but I've created a, you know, a clickable table of contents that is below this video that you can then go to to go to the specific topics that you want to hit if you're sharing this with a friend, etc. Now, a couple of caveats. You know, thing one is I'm going to use an airline example. And I use the airline example because we can all relate to it. We understand about airlines, we've flown on planes, etc. But I'm not trying to make recommendations for your company specific. So it allows you to deal with a concept before you get into content. And part of the issue is this, that there are no rules for OKRs. Don't listen to all those books you've read. Those are just people's opinions. You get to set up UK OKRs for what makes sense for you. And your examples can be different than the one I'm going to talk through because of your industry, because of your department, because of your needs, because of your key accounts, because of your economy, a whole bunch of things. And so if after you've listened to this, you want a more interactive web meeting with you and your team to walk through examples that are close to your situation, we're happy to do, th do so. But this is meant as sort of a generic walkthrough. So. As I mentioned, today we're going to use an airline example. This is the Southwest example that we've been working on since, I don't know, we helped out with her back in 93. It's a simple strategy map which identifies their strategic objectives and their cause and effect relationship. And so we're going to use this as a framework as we take a look at Viva Goals. So we've transitioned to what you would normally land on as you opened up Viva Goals. Now, just to help you through the navigation for a second, this area here is obviously where the OKRs live and the drill through and all that kind of stuff. Over here, we've got where the hard work happens. This is where you create teams, users, you know, configure your OKRs, all that kind of good stuff. Down the bottom here are a set of default pinned or saved reports that allow you to access Viva Calls. And this menu across the top here is context sensitive, depending what option you've chosen on the left. The menu at the top changes that allows you to export, import, save, create PowerPoints, filter, all that kind of good stuff. The navigation is pretty straightforward. If I were to click on the Chevron, I can see the children of this objectives, their key results by this dial, or associated projects. I think of these as run the business and change the business. And so this list view is a standard way of looking at it. But you can also take a look at it through this alignment view. And as you'd expect from an alignment view, as I click on any objective, I can see his children, his grandchildren, and so forth as I drill through the structure. So this allows us to see the strategy from the bottom up or from the top down. We can understand what that linkage looks like both ways. There are obviously many other views available. Let's switch back to the list view and we can take a look at it for my personal objectives, the ones that link to me or any particular department. Remembering that one of the key principles of OKRs is about transparency. So this allows you to see the overall organizations, mine, departmental and so forth. So without any additional effort, I can quickly see which objectives are linked to which objectives. Now, one of the fun things about Viva Goals is it allows you to show the interconnectedness of work. So I can have multiple owners or even multiple teams associated with objectives. What does this mean? It may mean that on occasion, people may be delegating objectives to me based on their recognition that we're associated together. So we can begin to get that mirror the actual realities of business through this multidimensional view of OKRs. FIFA Goals also allows you to create your own custom reports. So I went into Explorer on the left, and here there's a whole bunch of saved reports that default, but also ones that we've created before. So for example, if I were to click on this sample weekly data, it brings up a bunch of filters based on what we've previously set. And in this case, I might want to take a look at it comparing our current performance to previous weeks. And so this allows us to begin to customize what reports look like and what we're going to share with different stakeholders. We can share these so that we can access them individually or more widely as we go forward. So I'm just emphasizing that there's a bunch of flexibility in terms of how we take a look at the OKRs. In terms of other views, 
if I go back to the main menu and choose, for example, the overall organization, I can also see things pre-sorted. For example, we can create dashboards which allow us to set a standard set of dashboards that we would use for any executive all hands meeting presentation and so forth. And I can take a look at this either on the screen or I can move it into presentation mode where on each screen, it allows us to see a different view of the data as we take the team through the conversations. And again, what we're trying to do here is just accommodate how it is you're normally going to be presenting this in different formats. Now, I want to add one more bit in about the ability to be flexible in reporting. So I'm just going to whip back up to Explorer here and choose any one of these reports that we've been looking at. Now, you'll see what happens is automatically we have the filter saved from the last time that we worked on this report. And we can add in any filters that we want. So things like filtering by gold type, like committed versus aspirational, uh, what data is coming from Jira, what are the tags, who the owners are, and that kind of thing. What this allows us to do is take those preset reports and very quickly identify and drill into specific views that we might, we might want. And so what we find is that 90% of our customers' need, reporting needs come out of Viva Goals. But obviously, it's also super easy just to export the data to Excel and bring it into Power BI to take further steps to it. So again, there's good flexibility in the reporting structures, but also leveraging off the entire Microsoft ecosystem. So let's move into a conversation about how we enter data. Let's take an OKR as an example. We'll go into profitability and in particular, profitability. Now, within this objective, as I click on it, you can see the historic data trends um, the entire history of that objective. We're just going to check in. We use this little clock type dial here. If I click on that, a form shows up over here that allows me to enter. Now, in this particular case, I'm going to manually enter the data, which I can go ahead and key it in. And I can also set the status that I believe it's at, on track, behind, and so forth, and enter a commentary if I want. And that's all there is to a check-in. So the manual data entry allows you to get up and running with your OKRs right away, but obviously you want to automate that as quickly as possible. So within objectives, it's easy to link to automation techniques. So I've moved into EBITDA, and I can see here that it's automatically updating from a data source. In this case, it's just an Excel flat file that's dropped by our system of records on an ongoing basis. So I can schedule both the dropping of the file and the importing of the file into Viva goals. Or alternately, if I wanted to add it in, it's also pretty straightforward. So I'll go back up to profitability. And if I want to change this, instead of being manually to being automated, then I can choose based on the preset integrations that we've got available, where I might want to automate it from. And if I choose any one of those, it will allow me to go into that tool and quickly just identify where it is we might want to identify, get that data from. And it's just a matter of literally going in, choosing the data element I want, and the integrations connected. So it's pretty straightforward to either pull it in from spreadsheets, pull it in from Power BI, we've already done the integrations, or any of the other 42 integrations that exist off the shelf for Viva Goals. So I would now want to move on to some broader configuration type conversations. So thing one is there are no hard rules about how you configure your OKRs. And within Viva Goals, you can begin to set it up around the design structures you would like. For example, do we want objectives being nested, nested under key results? Do we want objectives to be contributing to their parents and so forth? So there's a bunch of decisions that allow us to design how we want our objectives and key results. We can determine what are the terminology we want to use, et cetera, et cetera. As you can expect, we can set up teams. Teams can be as hierarchical and as deep as you want and so forth. So there's a bunch of configuration tools which are at hand, which are pretty handy to have. I want to briefly touch on how it is we set up an objective or a key result or even an initiative. So I'm just going to choose an existing one and hit the edit button. Now, a form opens up that's pretty much the same whether I'm entering an objective, a key result, 
or a project. It allows me to do things like set up the details behind the objective. I can choose multiple alignments, what um, parents it might have, and it could have multiple parents that I can choose from. It allows me to choose one or more owners. It allows me to choose what the period is that it's in, whether that's a quarterly, annual, and so forth. It allows me to choose one or more teams that are associated with it. So you can see we can quickly build that web of interconnectivity. Under topics like more options, I can do things like talk about different types of goal types. This might be committed, aspirational, maybe I have both. I can delegate this objective to other people in your organization. I can also begin to manage permissions, which many people are concerned about. And in this case, I can not only do macro things like who can see it, who can align to it, and so forth. I can even get down to the individual team or group level. I can specify specific people that shared with and also discover what things, what people have direct access just based on the hard keys that exist. I can create tags. Where tags are useful is where I want to add on to the dimensionality of the data. So things like attributing all the key results associated with one key account, one region, one process, and so forth. This allows me to filter them for reports and so forth. And then finally, on the outcome side, I can begin to set specific metrics and outcomes that I'm associated with. And also, as we saw before, automate how it's collected and so on. Now, for a key result, it's slightly different. And I'm just going to go into that for a second because there are some of the differences that are pretty important. When I get down to um, setting up the metric, I can set up metrics. I've got a choice of whether I want to set it up to reach, increase from, decrease from, stay above, stay below, find a baseline, what those numbers are in metrics and so on. And I can even set individual thresholds. So again, it allows you to customize what this looks like to a great extent. And what would a demonstration be if we didn't talk about AI or in this case, Copilot? So Copilot is built into Viva Goals and we can do a bunch of things. For example, if we want to create OKRs from an existing document, all we have to do is select that document. In this case, it's just a simple Word document that has a bunch of our objectives in it. So while it's busy processing, these are the objectives that we've given. Right, you've probably seen a dozen of these things, just a list of what the objectives look like, some ideas, some key targets, that kind of thing. And what you'll see is does an outstanding job of identifying the objectives and key results within each one of those and provides a pretty good starting point. It's about 75% of what you want, but it gives you a running start based on existing documents.